presentation. So you might want to look further. And various people have tried to look further. Newton uh, was originally asked. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't tell us anything. It tells you how it moves. It should be enough. I told you how it moves. Not what. But uh, people are often unsatisfied without a mechanism, and I would like to describe one theory which has been invented for, as a, among others, of the type that you might want, that this is a result of large numbers. And that's why it's mathematical. And I give this theory, perhaps you've thought of it yourself, every once in a while some student comes running in and suddenly explains that. Suppose that in the world, everywhere, there are flying through us at very high speed a lot of particles that come equally in all directions and just shooting by, shooting by, shooting by, and once in a while hit, like in a bombard. But we, are, we and the sun are practically transparent for them, nearly. But some hit, and so it's not completely transparent. And look what would happen. If the sun is here, and the earth is here, then if the sun were here, there would be particles bombarding from all sides, giving little impulses by the rattle of the bang, bang, the few that hit, which would put, not shape the earth in any particular direction, because there is many coming from one side or the other, top to bottom. However, when the sun is here, the particles which are coming in this direction are partly absorbed by the sun because some of them hit the sun and don't go through. Therefore, the number that are coming from this direction toward the earth is less than the number that are coming from the other side because here they have no opposition from no sun there. And it's easy to see after some mental effort that the further the sun is away, the less in proportion of all of the particles are being taken out of the possible directions in which particles can come. And in fact, inversely is the square of the distance. So there will therefore be an impulse toward the sun on the earth that's inversely is the square of the distance and is the result of large numbers of very simple operations, just, just hit one after the other from all directions. And therefore, the strangeness of the mathematical relation will be very much reduced because the fundamental operation is much simpler than calculating the inverse of the square of the distance. This machine does the calculating particles bounce. Only trouble with it is that it doesn't work for other reasons. Every theory that you make up has to be ag analyzed against all the possible consequences and to see if it predicts anything else. And this predicts something else. If the Earth is moving this way, more particles will hit it from the front than from the back. If you're running in the rain, more rain hits you from the, from the front of the face than in the back of the head because you're running into the rain. So as the Earth is moving in this direction, it's running into the particles, rather, and running away from the ones that are chasing it from behind, so that more particles hit it from the front than from the back, and there would be a force also sideways whenever there was any motion. This sideways force would slow the Earth up in the orbit, and it certainly would not have lasted the at least three or four billion years that it has been going around the sun. So that's the end of that theory. Well, you say that was a good one, though. It got rid of the mathematics for a while. Maybe... Maybe I can invent a better one, and maybe you can. <laughs>